In this chapter, we're going to look at what nutrient we need to maintain our mouth, to maintain our teeth, to maintain our gums, to maintain the bones in our um, oral structures. What nutrients do we need? So let's look at that. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is a cranium. So cranium is something that houses the brain. Um, we have like the the, the neurocranium, that's actually the one that houses the brain, and then we have the visceracranium, which is what houses the face. So there's like bones that are in the face and bones that cover the brain or around the brain. And so um, we need this to develop properly for us to be able to communicate, right, to talk, for us to be able to eat. So our cranium, which is this part right here, is very important. And for this to happen, we need to intake the right, we need to eat the right nutrients so that we can get a proper development of the cranium, of the bones that are in our head and neck region or in our head region. Oops. Okay, so um, there's some critical periods that are really important. Um, so like before, or when we are a fetus, so when we're inside our, the womb, um, the things that the mother eat is very important because it helps with fetal development. So the, the fetus that's inside the womb needs to get the right nutrients so that they can get, like for us, when we're thinking about dentistry, we want them to get healthy teeth. And so nutrients matter when they are in the womb. Because when they're in the womb, that's when you can get like the uh, teeth formation happens. It actually happens really early on, like within the third, within the second trimester of pregnancy, teeth development uh, occur on the uh, and, and when I say teeth development, what happens is it happens like on the uh, inside the gums, it hasn't erupted yet. So inside the gums, you can see that the, the buds have been formed, the tooth buds have been formed. So really important during the fetal development that we have the right nutrients, that the mother eats the right nutrients. Because let's see, let's look at this. Primary teeth, well that's what I was talking about, it happens like the mineralization or the tooth buds start forming really early on in the second trimester. So since the second trimester is like in the fourth month of pregnancy. And so as soon as the baby comes out, as soon as the baby is born, the crown, so this is the crown, the crowns are already formed. Yes, it's not erupted, but it's already up there. The, the actual crowns have been formed. And by the time you become one, Okay, so when you're one year old, the permanent teeth, their crowns have already been formed. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if we have the right nutrients, we can make sure that there's nothing wrong with the developmental of the crowns. We don't want we want the enamel to come out healthy, right? And so that all depends on the nutrients we, in, we intake. And so as a kid, um, the mother, sorry, as a baby, the mother should really look at the nutrients that they're intaking because we want the crowns of their baby teeth to be um, perfect. And then when the child is born, up until the age of one, the permanent teeth crowns, which are these ones, are developing. So we want to make sure that that child is also getting all its nutrients so that we don't have any issues with their permanent teeth. Because by age one, the crowns have already developed. Salivary glands, so there are three salivary glands, there's a parotid, there's the submandibular, and there's the sublingual gland, and I have videos going over these different glands, um, but what I want you guys to know over here is that when we take the, when we eat the right nutrients, we're going to um, make sure that our salivary glands get developed properly. So salivary glands, if we have, if we are not ingesting the right nutrients, our salivary glands can suffer. Um, the size won't be appropriate. We won't get lots of saliva. And if we don't get lots of saliva in our mouth, it can cause cavities. So uh, salivary gland development is really important and nutrients uh, play a huge role. So lack of nutrients can cause issues. Lack of nutrients, so not taking the right, not getting the right amount of nutrients, can also affect the periodontal tissue. So when we say periodontal tissue, what we're referring to is this whole thing right here. The enamel can get affected, the dentin can get affected, the pulp, the gums, the bone, all of this can get affected if we don't have the right nutrients. So the nutrients we need to eat are um, these ones. These are the nutrients we're actually going to look at today. So vitamin A, D, K, C, vitamin B. Um, we also want protein, calcium and phosphorus, iron and zinc. So we're going to look at all of these today and we're going to see um, how each of these vitamins relate to um, the oral structures, to the oral health. So let's start with vitamin A. What vitamin A does is it synthesizes, so that means it makes 
epi or, or yeah, it forms epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, epithelial means like the outside, so like the gums. Um, connective tissue is like the inside where the blood supply is. So if you look at your skin, the outer skin is epithelial tissue, the inner part of the skin or the inner skin is connective tissue, and then we have bone. So the tissues, like the oral tissues, like your gums, for example, are made, um, so vitamin A helps create healthy gums, basically. It creates, um, not only helps with gums, it also helps with salivary glands, it helps with the enamel and dentin. So remember, um, in a previous class, you may have learned that amelioblast and odontoblast are important. So amelioblast help make our cells that make enamel, odontoblasts are cells that make dentin. So if you, the good way to remember this is vitamin A, helps with enamel, so amelioblast, because these are cells that have um, um, that help develop enamel or make enamel. So A for vitamin A, A for amelioblast, and odontoblast, so they all have A, and A for dentin. Odontoblast is cells that help with the formation of dentin. So if you don't have um, lots of vitamin A, if you lack of the vitamin A, because we know that vitamin A helps with formation of enamel, right? It helps with enamel. If you don't have enough, we can get enamel hypoplasia. Hypo means less. Hyper means more. So hypo means you have less enamel. So this example is a picture of less enamel. You can see the enamel isn't fully developed. Vitamin D is another nutrient that we really need. So vitamin D, what it does is it's good for bones. Okay, any hard tissues, the so hard tissues are bones. So in our mouth, we have lots of bones and um, we need the bones because it houses the teeth. And so what can happen is if you don't have enough vitamin D, not only could you get enamel and dentin issues, so hyperplasia where enamel and dentin are, are not formed properly or do you have, um, it just doesn't look right, but it can also affect the bone. And so um, people can lose teeth if they don't have enough vitamin D. How can you remember vitamin D is for bone? Um, well, student RDH said, think of um, D for delicate bones. So if you think of delicate bones, that's how you can link D for um, delicate bones or D for bones. Vitamin K. So this is another one. Okay. Vitamin K is for blood clotting. So it helps clot blood. And so um, if you don't have enough vitamin K, then it will take a very long time for your blood to stop, um, for your blood to clot. So what I want you guys to know, and this again is from Student RDH, I'm not taking any credit here, because Student RDH came up with this really genius idea for wake-up memory where they said, well, K kind of think like of K as C, and don't think of clot, clot, but just think of uh, C with a K. Um, so blood clotting is um, a way you can remember that if you have a deficiency in vitamin K, your blood is not going to clot. You can see here, all the green vegetables are really great um, or high in vitamin K. Vitamin C is, helps with collagen, and so C for uh, vitamin C, C for collagen, and collagen is really important. Collagen kind of strengthens the, it's a protein that like, strengthens the, the bone, the muscles, the skin, the tendons, so it's really helpful. Um, it kind of holds the body together, basically. It holds the body together. And so we want to have a lot of vitamin C so that we can have um, nice firm uh, skin and bones and muscles and tendons. And so here are, if you look at this picture, you can see the oranges are excellent sources of vitamin C, broccoli, tomatoes, bananas. And so we need to intake that because if we do not, what can happen is it can affect the bone and the teeth formation. So it does affect the bone and teeth formation. And more importantly, I really want you to focus on the collagen part. So it really helps with the formation of collagen. It really helps with the skin and the muscles and the bones. <clears throat> if you have a deficiency, um, what happens is you can get scurvy. And so scurvy has the letter C in it. So that's how you can link vitamin C to scurvy, which is like bluish red tissues. Like the tissues are very enlarged. It kind of looks like this right here, right? And so this is called scurvy, which happens with vitamin C deficiency. So again, vitamin C helps with the formation of collagen, which kind of holds the body together, holds the skin and everything together. And if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, you can get scurvy, which is like enlarged red, bright red tissues. 
vitamin B is also really important. If we don't have enough vitamin B, well, these are the things that can happen. So you can get angular chylosis, which is where you get cracking in the corner of your lip. You could also get like a burning tongue, where your tongue feels like it's burning, doesn't look healthy. Um, you can even get like a, a lesions around your nose, so red lesions around your nose, So and gingivitis. So with vitamin B, angular chylosis, and burning tongue, those are the symptoms that can happen. So how can you, how can you remember this? Well, think of B. Okay, and think of B for balm, like lip balm. Okay, so you're thinking of B for lip balm. So angular chylosis, that's happening on the lip. Okay, lip for um, vitamin D, balm. I want you to think of lip balm. So vitamin B, you have um, lack of vitamin B. It's going to affect the lip. So angular chylosis. Um, it, and you can put on lip gloss. So you can think of gloss. Or what can happen is you can get like glossitis, for example. If you get like a burning tongue. So glossitis means like your tongue is like, inflamed or burning but that can also happen so think of lip balm and so when you think of lip balm the lip is affected think of lip gloss now so when you think of lip gloss glossitis can happen or a burning tongue can happen where the tongue is inflamed iron is another uh, nutrient that's really important because if someone has lack of iron what can happen is um Glossitis can happen. So itis means inflammation. So inflammation of the tongue. Gloss means tongue. So you can get inflammation of the tongue. You can get angular chylitis or angular chylosis. You could get, so iron is really important because what it does is it makes hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is in the blood. So if you have lack of iron, your blood isn't. You have lack of let's just, red blood cells. Let's just say red blood cells. And so that's an issue because then you're, um, when you have lack of blood in your body, you can have instead of like pink gums, now you'll have gray gums because there's lack of blood flow. You can also get um, dysphagia. This basically means, dysphagia means difficulty swallowing. Um, so I think of D for difficulty, S for swallowing. So difficulty swallowing is dysphagia. So it's an issue. We don't want to have low iron. Here's a picture of um, glossitis. So inflammation of the tongue, where the tongue could be burning, the tongue doesn't look right. And that is because of iron deficiency and also because of vitamin B deficiency. So here again, glossitis, angular chylitis. Calcium and phosphorus. So calcium and phosphorus are really important um, nutrients to have because what calcium and phosphorus does is it calcifies or um, forms hard tissues, and hard tissues are like the enamel, the bone, and stuff like that. So we need to have lots of calcium and lots of phosphorus. Remember, calcium can come from milk. And same with phosphorus. Phosphorus is found in milk and milk products, meat as well, um, beans, nuts, grains, they all have phosphorus. Um, so calcium and phosphorus are really important. Uh, dairy, right, has lots of calcium and phosphorus, and they really make, they calcify the heart tissue, they make the bones, the teeth, uh, really hard and healthy. Then we have fluoride, and fluoride is really important because what fluoride does is it, is it protects you against cavities, it remineralizes, it makes your teeth hard, and so especially when you are, um, when the baby is between six months to two and a half years, this is when your permanent teeth are developing. Because remember, the crowns of your permanent teeth are formed at one year. So in this range, you really want to make sure you're getting fluoride um, because it really strengthens the enamel and it prevents cavities as well. And sometimes if some we have too much fluoride, so before, if we're ingesting a lot of fluoride, like we're swallowing toothpaste, for example, um, before the, our permanent teeth have come out, we can get fluorosis where you can get like, and it comes in many different um, depending on how much fluoride you swallow or you ingest, it could be very severe or it could be mild where you can just see specks of white um, or you can see streaks of white or like the whole um, tooth is covered with white fluorosis or it could be very, uh, it could be brown mottled appearance, that's like severe fluorosis. So we want to have enough fluoride um, but not too much that it causes fluorosis and not too little that it um, causes a lot of acid attacks it, it make it destroys the enamel zinc is um, also important you can see you can see some examples of zinc um, rich foods over here so chicken carrots 
eggs. And so what I want you to know for zinc is that it helps with wound healing. So if you, you know, got a cut, for example, and it's not healing, it could be because of lack of zinc. And so the way to remember this is zinc sounds like zips, again, some student RDA, so you're zipping a wound, a wound. So if you have lots of zinc, the wound kind of heals faster. So zips a wound, if you can think of it like that. Lots of zinc is good because it zips the wound, helps you heal. And lastly, protein is really important because what protein does is it helps with everything, really. It helps all, it repairs and maintains all the tissues in the mouth, your gum, your bones, your teeth, your enamel, everything. And so if you have a deficiency in protein, if you're not taking, eating a lot of protein, what can happen is you can get crowded and rotated teeth like this. This is because this person did not have enough protein and it didn't develop their jaws, their mouth didn't develop properly, and that's what caused this rotated teeth. So it's really important that we have a great, um, a good amount of protein that we're um, eating because we don't want this to happen, right? We don't want overcrowding of the teeth. And then lastly, what I want to look at is environment makes a difference. So. If you have, I think the one that I really want to point out is nicotine. Nicotine causes, um, is bad because we know nicotine is part of smoking and we know smoking can really negatively affect the tooth development. It can, um, what they're saying here is it can cause uh, cavities in people, even the people with secondhand smoke. Who are, so children who are experiencing secondhand smoke can also get cavities. Tetracycline, this is an antibiotic. And if you take this tetracycline antibiotic, it can cause tetracycline staining, and this staining never goes away. And then lastly, if you take too much fluoride, you can get dental fluorosis, which I showed you a picture of. Let me show you a picture of tetracycline staining. So here's tetracycline staining, and if you like, have injustice and you're under the age of nine, or you're a baby, and, or you're in uh, a womb, for example, inside your mom's uh, womb. This can happen in your, your your mother takes tetracycline. This can happen to your teeth when you develop your teeth. Um, if you take it when you're nine years or younger, and so your teeth are still developing, this can happen as well. So um, we might be really mindful that we don't take tetracycline when we are young or when we're when we're pregnant.